Good Sunday morning to you. We want to welcome each and every one of you to the Trinity Baptist Church in Westfield, North Carolina. If you don't have a church to attend or you're looking for a church to attend, we want to always take time to invite you to come and be with us in any or all of our services. Our Sunday morning services start at 10 o'clock. We have Sunday school preaching service at 11 o'clock, Sunday night service at 6 p.m. Wednesday night services are at 7 p.m. And we're located at 1233 Collins Town Road in Westfield, North Carolina. If you'd ever like to correspond by mail, you can send that to 275 Toast Road, Mount Airy, North Carolina, 27030. We also have an FM transmitter for those that are too sick to come inside or disabled to where they can't come inside but still want to come to church. They can come to church, sit in the church parking lot in their vehicle and tune the radio to 92.9 FM and be able to hear what's going on inside. So good to be with you this morning. We hope and pray that uh, the service this morning, these little short services are a blessing to you. Whenever you whenever you view, thank you for viewing. We hope they're a blessing to your heart and and uh, and we just want to continue to do it as long as the Lord has us to do it. Well, I tell you what, get out that good old authorized King James Bible if you are to where you can look with us. Be turned to the book of Luke chapter five. Luke chapter five, I want to go to the Lord in the word of prayer. And I trust that you'll pray with us and pray for us. Father, thank you so much for the privilege you've given us to be able to have this video. I pray it'd be a blessing to each and every one that views it whenever they view it. I pray that nobody would use it for an excuse to not go to church. But Lord, I pray that it'd be a blessing to those that do and still view at other times. And then those that are unable to get out and go, Father, pray it'd be a blessing to them. We pray most of all for those that's lost that they'll get saved and those that's back so they'll get right with you. Help us all to draw closer. I pray for all the folks on our church prayer list that's sick, God, that you'd raise them up physically. Pray for all of our missionaries. Pray for the Brent Rochester family, Lord, that you'd bless them in a great way. And pray for little Chloe that you continue to bless her as well. And just thank you for the precious word of God that we have to look at. Help us right now as we look at it. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. Amen. Luke chapter number five. Well, I appreciate this. We got about halfway down through the story of the paralyzed man that got healed. And uh, we got down actually to Luke five, verse number 20 and 21. But uh, I want to start reading in verse 17 and catch us up a little bit. And then we'll try to look at the rest of this story this morning if we can. Luke chapter five, verse number 17. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching talking about the Lord that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord, the Bible says, was present to heal them. In other words, they could have got some help if they'd have wanted it. Think about that right there for just a minute. They could have got some help if they wanted it. You know why a lot of people don't get no help? They don't want help. They're too proud to ask for it. Well, let's read on. And behold, men brought in a bed a man that was taken with a palsy. They sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. When they could not find by what reason or by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went up upon the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. Get the picture. They let him down through the roof. They can't get in through the door. There's so many people there. So they go up on the roof. They remove the tiles and they let this man that was sick down on his couch or stretcher or whatever uh, on into the midst of the Lord. Now look at verse 20. The Bible says that when he saw their faith, whose faith? Well, the, the four men's faith that brought their friend to the Lord, but also I believe the man on the stretcher's faith. And when he saw their faith, he said to him, man, thy sins are forgiven thee. Thy sins are forgiven thee. The Lord Jesus Christ is the only one that can forgive sin. Some people may act like they can. They can't. Jesus Christ, when he says, man, thy sins are forgiven thee, man, that's, that man's sins are forgiven. I promise you that right there. You say, well, why do you think it was the man on the, on the cot or the couch's faith when he saw their faith? Why do you think it was his too? Because Jesus don't save people against their will. I believe this man had faith. One reason this man on the stretcher or the couch had faith Probably was because he saw his friend's faith. How did he see their faith? By their works, as James talks about. Well, Jesus said, man, thy sins are forgiven thee. In verse 21, and the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, who is this which speaketh blasphemies? They accused the Lord of speaking blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Well, of course, nobody can. 
They didn't believe he was God, but he was, and he is, thank God. They said, who can forgive sins but God alone? Now, now we'll, we'll come back to that, Lord will, in a minute. But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answering said unto them, why reason ye in your hearts? Whether it's easier to say, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, rise up and walk. Now notice verse 24. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power upon earth to forgive sins. So you'll know that. He said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise, and take up thy couch, and go into thine house. So you'll know that I have power to forgive sins. I'm going to tell the sick of the palsy to get up. And he did. And verse 25 says, and immediately he rose up before them. He got up before them, took up that whereon he lay, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. They said in verse 21, who can forgive sins but God alone? And Jesus said, so you'll know I have power to forgive sins. He said to the sick of, Paul, sick of the palsy, arise, take up thy bed and go in thy house. And he did. He got up. He was healed immediately. He, immediately he rose up before them, verse 25, and took up that whereon he lay. He picked up what he had been laying on and departed. What's that mean? He walked out with it. He had to be carried in, but he walked out with it. Now, don't forget that verse where it said, verse 17, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. This man got some help. Why didn't the rest of that crowd get any help? They didn't believe in Jesus. They didn't believe he could. This man did. His friends did. And thank God he got some help. Again, immediately he rose up before them, verse 25, took up that whereon he lay and departed his own house. Notice this, glorifying God. Glorifying God. Now listen, he was thankful, no doubt, for his four friends that brought him. He was thankful for their persistence. He was thankful that they didn't give up when they couldn't get him in the door. But listen, he glorified God. He glorified God for healing him. Well, I tell you, we need to bring glory and honor to God with our lips, with our lives, amen, with what we wear, amen. You say, don't get on that, preacher. Why not? Amen. Our, our, our attire, our dress, what we wear, ought to bring glory and honor to God. What do you mean, preacher? We should dress modestly. Modestly. Amen. We don't want to be like the world. No. We want to be like what God wants us to be. This man glorified God. When people get help from God, they ought to glorify God. Now, the Bible says, verse 26, and they were all amazed that were there. They were all amazed at what Christ had done. And they were all amazed and they glorified God. I like that. And were filled with fear saying, we have seen strange things today. They glorified God when they saw this man glorify God. And he glorified God because of what the Lord had done for him. And thank God he had four friends that knew that God could help him and got him to the Lord. And he exercised faith as they did. And he was forgiven of his sins. And he was healed that day. And when he was healed, he took up that whereon he lay, the Bible says. <laughs> what do you mean, preacher? They might have let him down through the roof, but he walked out through the door. They got out of his way. He walked out through the door. He carried his own bed when he left. And the Bible says he departed into his own house and glorified God. And glorifying God, that's how it's written. Boy, you and I that are saved, we ought to try to bring glory and honor to God. God help us. You know that's why we're here. Lost sinner friend, let me tell you this. You know why you're still alive? Because the Lord has allowed you to still be alive. He loves you. He cares for you. He wants to save you. He wants to forgive you of your sins. He wants to give you a new life. Thank God, there's nothing like it. A fresh start. Wouldn't a lot of people like to have a fresh start? I'm glad we can when we get saved with the grace of God. I'm glad God forgives us of all our sins. He changes us. He makes a new creature out of us. Thank God that he does that. And I give him glory for it. And I want to be like this man that was healed. Glorifying God. Giving God the glory. He's been so good to me. How about you? Has he been good to you? 
What kind of expression do you have on your face most of the time? What, what kind of expression do people see on your face most of the time? Think about it. Is it depression? Is it anger? Lord, help us all, amen. Hey, we ought to lift God up, give him glory, praise God. He's been so good to me and he's been so good to you. And thank you for viewing today. I hope this has been a blessing to you. Lord willing, we'll be back with you next Sunday morning with another one of these videos. We trust that you'll uh, hit the like button on these videos. If you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel, we would ask you to subscribe. Facebook, and uh, not Facebook, but YouTube notices that and can get it out to more people where more people can see it. So if you would like these videos on Facebook, hit the like button on YouTube. I keep getting mixed up. But hit the like button on YouTube or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now, if you don't like it, don't hit the like button. But I'm saying if you appreciate the videos and appreciate the Word of God, hit the like button every time you see one of these videos. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe, and we'll get more people under the sound of the gospel. Thank you for your help. Thank you for your prayers. We're praying for you until next Sunday morning. God bless you is my prayer.